Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I apologize for the poor lighting. I'm in the garage side of the shop, and as you can see behind me, uh, I have right here a 1986 GMC S15 Sonoma. This is the Sierra Classic, which is the base model. My son is getting close to the age where it's time for him to learn how to drive, and in keeping with the family tradition, I always start my kids out with an old beat up truck. This one isn't very beat up. I'm actually pretty surprised at what I was able to find for a truck that is, I don't know, how old is this? It's almost 40 years old, 38 years old. So, I originally wasn't going to do too much. Uh, I wasn't going to do a lot of filming about this truck. I obviously didn't film picking it up or anything. I found this truck on Facebook Marketplace. It was about 100 miles away. I held out for a while just to see if I could find anything closer, but if you've ever tried to buy a vehicle on Facebook Marketplace, you understand that it's a hassle. The person who sold me this truck was very cool. He, I mean, he, he communicated really well, and um, I don't know, it just, it was worth it to the drive to get to somebody who was serious about selling and was willing to just talk with me and tell me what he thought and what he knew was wrong with the truck. The major mistake that I made when I bought this truck is I picked it up on a Sunday. Um, I was going to trailer it or put it on a tow dolly, but I couldn't. I started looking on a Friday and I couldn't, all weekend long, I couldn't find anything that was available at U-Haul or anything. So I thought I would try my luck in driving this thing home. About 30 minutes into the drive, everything started smoking, the thing was puking oil. I ended up having to stop, and uh, I had my dad with me in his truck. The low oil level light went on, the switch um, light went on, and so I knew I was in trouble. So I pulled the truck over, stopped it, and had my dad tow me with a tow rope to the nearest Walmart, and we just left it there overnight. The next day, I did the thing I should have done in the beginning. I rented a tow dolly, and then in the Walmart parking lot, I disconnected the drive shaft and loaded this guy up and finally got it home. So what we're going to do today is figure out what's wrong, why it's puking out oil, hopefully fix it. Um, in the process of removing the U-joint, I lost one of the caps. Uh, just because I, I wasn't what well, it wasn't the forefront of my mind at the time so I ended up misplacing one of the caps so it couldn't hurt to replace the u-joint on this guy anyway I'll do a walk around we'll take a look at this truck what's under the hood what comes with it the options that were available at this time and then uh, we'll kind of go from there I think I'm gonna do an oil change I'm gonna come up with a game plan on things that I want to do with this truck um, so if this is something you enjoy, I hope you stick around. It's going to be a good one. Okay, we'll do a quick walk around of this truck. Like I said before, this is a 1986 GMC S15 Sierra I believe it's the Sierra Classic, which makes it the base of the base models. It is a 2.8 liter V6 with an automatic transmission. So that would be probably an upgrade because I think the absolute base model would be a 2.4 liter um, four cylinder Iron Duke engine with a manual transmission. The interesting thing about this truck is I do have power steering but I don't have power brakes. Um, so you'd think you'd get both or neither, but I don't know. You know, the options back in the 80s were crazy. This one doesn't have air conditioning, so that'll make things interesting in the summertime. Whoever installed the last battery didn't even bother to hold it down, but they left the battery hold down there for me, so that's nice. Um, it has this, it has this crazy sound, or um, security system that like some aftermarket security system you can see it has like a little contact here that that used to be spring-loaded and there's the lockout for it is right here on the front of the truck 
I mean, I don't, I, I think there's no chance of this thing ever working again. It's like an actual air raid siren. Um, but if I can get it to work again, I'll, I'll, I might, but it, it, if I don't, I'll just have to remove the whole thing and uh, I'll, I'll just have to leave this little guy here or I'll have a big old hole in the, uh, the side of my fender. So it's fine. It's part of the provenance of the engine. This engine is completely stock. I mean, aside from maybe a previous owner replacing some of the bolt-on parts, there, nothing has been done to this engine. Um, it's a 2.8. They're not really... I mean, people have put turbos on them and stuff, but besides that, people don't really mess with these engines, and they tend to last a pretty long time as long as you take care of them. I do have plans for upgrades. I'd like to get my hands on a complete truck that is totaled either because of frame damage you know like the rusted out frames or one that doesn't have a title or find one on the cheap so i can start transferring and hopefully i would find one with ac and the brake booster um the brake booster isn't that big of a deal to upgrade but the ac i'm probably going to need a donor truck for that going around the side here this truck did come with a little low profile toolbox which kind of works right here. Once I do the clean out, we'll kind of, I guess we'll do a little bit of exploring and find all the goodies that were left behind for, for me from the last owner. This truck sits on 14 inch wheels. I got the fancy little GMC, you know, basically they were just stock hubcaps. Um, I don't mind the four inch wheels, I just or the 14 inch wheels, I just don't think they fill out the wheel wells very well. So I'm going to probably get something bigger. In addition to that, it's getting harder and harder to find affordable 14 inch tires. So if I upgrade even to a 15 inch, it opens up a whole world of possibilities um, for tires, you know, availability and cost. A little bit of patina across the back, it looks like something was laying across the the back of the bed while well, it was in storage for a period of time uh, a little bit of cracking on the paint all in all on the exterior i would rate this probably is for the age an eight out of ten the only rust that i'm the real rust and rot i'm aware of is there's a little bit, bit of rot here in the tailgate oh just on a side note the tailgate does not open so i'm gonna have to unfreeze that um the only other rust is I've got a little bit of rot in this cab corner here. And then the obvious the or the expected rust in the rockers. Both rockers have uh, are rotting out right in the front of the door area. But the doors are good. The frame is good. I mean, everything is good. And the truck is super straight. You can tell it's never been in an accident before. I think this paint will polish up really good. I haven't decided yet what I want to do with the paint. I'm either going to do the, you know, like some type of patina coating, like Poppy's Patina or the Vice Grip Garage Patina Sauce, or there's a Sweet Patina also, just one of those products, maybe. Or I might cut and buff this and just leave the flaws where they're at because it's interesting how... You know, I've lost paint all the way down to the, the, the metal, the bare metal, but it really has not rusted that bad. And, you know, it probably has to do with the way it was uh, stored in the past. Just a the tiniest couple of dings that you can barely see, especially in this light. There's a little ding here, and there's a ding along here, right here, on the truck bed, but that's it. A little bit of rust, surface rust here on the... Uh, the top of the, the the rear window and then this was the surprise I didn't even realize that when I came to pick up the truck that it came with an aftermarket sunroof whoever installed this sunroof did a really good job I'll go ahead and bring us to the inside here and we can take a look at the uh, sunroof I mean whoever installed it did a really good job um, I really can't complain it doesn't leak I mean this thing has been through storms already and not a drop of water on the inside i'm a little concerned about the gasket and whether or not i'll be able to find a replacement but for the most part um i may have been discouraged from buying this truck if i knew it had a sunroof on it but now i'm pretty 
you know, I'm pretty okay with the idea of having it since it was done so well. So the interior of this truck. Um, again, it's in okay condition. It's got some aftermarket or some, I don't know, I think these are blazer seats in here. Um, the dash is cracked, as most of these dashes are, unfortunately. And maybe if I find a better dash, I can, I'll drop it in here. Um, the instrument cluster is about as basic as you can get. All it has is a speedometer and a fuel gauge and your odometer, and that's it. Everything else is just like dummy lights that will come on if you have a problem. Non-AC truck, so um, you have no AC controls. It's only vent or heat. Some goofy aftermarket stereo that... I don't think it even works. The glove box, unfortunately, is broken, so I might have to figure out how to uh, either fix this one or replace it. I mean, it looks like physically broken on the hinge, so that could be a challenge. I'm hoping I'll be able to find maybe a S10 one that I can swap the badge over or something. But if I can find an entire donor truck with a decent dash, I'll probably just swap the whole dash over. Since this was converted from a bench seat to bucket seats, it's, there's a lot of space here and you've got the bench seat seat belts that are flopping around in here. Um, I think I've said, well, manual locks, manual windows, which is obvious. Uh, a bunch of speaker wire and I don't know, whoever owned this before had some big plans as far as um, some loud sounds in here so I've got to figure out what's going on with all of this 12 volt power running through to this amplifier and um, everything so one other thing I guess I didn't mention it yet um, we do have some rust holes in the floors and um, they're pretty significant. I'm not afraid of rust holes though. Um, I'm not a great welder, but I'm good enough to be able to patch something like that. And the holes are on both sides. The passenger side hole is a lot smaller. There's a whole bunch of junk in this truck that I have to clean out still, but again, I think I'll cover that later when I actually clean this thing up. It does have an aftermarket lowering kit, so if you can see down there, the strut, you know, that all the strut hardware and everything looks brand new, and that's because it has lowering springs in shortened struts in the front, and then it's got lowering blocks in the rear. Um, I like the look. This is part of the thing that attracted me to this truck is how low it is. However. There is absolutely no suspension travel in the front of this truck at all. It is literally an eighth of an inch off the bump, spot, bump stops. So if I want to keep it low like this, I'm probably going to have to bring it back up to stock ride height and then lower it a different way. Lower it. I want to lower it using a spindle drop and maybe an A-arm drop instead of using uh, the springs and struts because you only get about an inch and a half of travel on the front end uh, when it comes out of the factory. So in the rear, I do have plenty of travel, um, so I'm not too worried about that. It's got like a three inch drop in the rear, and uh, I like the look. The only thing I don't like is how small the tires are in the wheel wells. I think we can do better. So let me show you what came with this truck. So this truck came with a set of 18 inch Camaro wheels. They are the same bolt pattern and they look cool and they come with center caps. The center caps do say, they do have the Chevy logo on them, but I can get replacement caps with GMC logo on them if I want. My biggest concern is that they are 18 inches, which seems a little excessive. I won't know until I be, I'm able to mock them up and then the other issue is it's got excessive back spacing uh, on the rim, and so it'll make contact with the suspension in the front, 
if I don't space them out. And so I, I'm going to have to space these out two inches if I want to use them on this truck. So in the near future, I'm just going to put the truck up on jack stands, pull the wheels off, mock up something that looks like a tire on these guys, and just kind of put them on the truck, just lean them up against it just to see how good it looks with them. And if I don't like it, I'll trade them or sell them or something and get something a little bit more standard. I mean, my preference is like a 15 or 16 inch just steel wheel with poverty caps. So these are a little on the fancy side, but they were free. They came with the truck, so I'm not complaining. All right, so down in there, you'll see a whole Christmas tree full of sensors. I think there's three sensors all coming off of like a three-way T down there. And the cleanest one, that's the one that I just cleaned off. That's, that's the one that's leaking. That is the one that caused all the problems and ended up shutting me down on the trip home from buying this truck. So this morning I got up early and topped up the uh, engine with oil. I disconnected the coil and I started cranking over the engine and I could see oil dripping out of that sensor on top of the filter housing which you see right below that. There's no way I would have been able to drive this home the day that I picked it up because it was a slow drip when the engine's cold but when that engine was hot it was just pouring out of that sensor and um, it was very obvious when my engine started smoking like crazy and the uh, low oil uh, the low oil level light came on. Luckily I was able to pull it over fast enough um, and I don't think there is any real damage because I did uh, hook the coil back up and I ran this engine for about a minute and just to see how bad the leak was and the engine sounds great so keeping my fingers crossed I'm guardedly optimistic that no permanent damage has happened to this engine Ultimately, if the engine does, is, does end up dying or being ruined, I, it's not a huge loss because this is the 2.8 V6, which isn't as desirable as the 4.3. I might swap it out with a 4.3 someday, uh, maybe a 350, but um, I'd like to make this engine last as long as I can. So now I gotta extract that sensor um, and see uh, how bad the damage actually is. Obviously the angles in here are horrible, but thank goodness for these tiny little Knipex pliers. See how bad that oil comes out once I take this out? Alright. So, here's the culprit. It is an AC. I'm getting some conflicting information online about what the uh, part number is, but I see that it is a, a two blade sender. I think one blade is for the actual signal and the other one might be for the light in the dash. And I'm going to go look that up right now. So this is a little plastic retainer. I believe its purpose is to hold the electrical connector onto the sensor. It just disintegrated when I touched it. I mean, it's falling apart just right now. 
it looks like it may have gotten overheated or melted. It is really close to the exhaust manifold, so that would not surprise me. Here's the culprit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to try to pressurize this on this end to see if I hear any leaks coming out the other end, just to 100% verify. Um, I could not visually verify well, with 100% certainty that the oil was coming out of here. However, there's nothing above it that was leaking and it was leaking directly on the oil filter below. So let me uh, get my air compressor set up and then I'll try to blow into this end and see if I can hear anything coming out around the seal here. So if I hook the air up to the back end of this, You see that? It's just blowing right through the end of it. That's where my oil leak was. It's crazy how much oil I lost just through this bad sensor. Time to order a new one. Okay, there's the original. Here's the replacement. I already checked the thread to make sure it matched, and it did. I believe this is strictly a switch, and so the polarity of these pins don't matter. And I went ahead and repaint the threads, so it'll make a good seal once I reinstall it. So let's take it out to the truck and see if it'll fit. This is the tool that I was able to use. It's the only tool that'll fit in the space provided. Uh, when I bought these, I didn't realize that's what I'd be using these for, but they're great. These are called Knipex Cobras, and these are the smallest size. I don't remember exactly what size they are, but as you can see, they're very small, maybe four inches. Um, and it does, it, it's got a really good uh, gripping surface on the teeth, and um, it grabs these uh, sensors really well without doing any damage to them. <clears throat> And it also, once I get once I get it engaged, it locks down on whatever it's grabbing onto, and I, I only have to put downward pressure on it. I don't have to just keep squeezing the handle. So once it locks in, I can just push down whichever direction I'm going, and uh, it holds on tight. So, great little tool. Alright, here we back. Here we are, back under the engine bay. Weird Christmas tree setup that holds all the sensors. <clears throat> I'm just gonna try to sneak my hand in here. I think it's tight enough. I gotta find that electrical connector that I pulled off. I don't know where it ended up. I think I see it dangling back there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it though.
as far as that retainer, uh, eh, it's gone. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to find another one. Maybe on a donor vehicle or a scrap yard or something. But there it is. I'm going to go ahead and start this engine up and make sure we don't leak. I'm going to reach in here and clean off the oil filter so if I get any new leakage, I'll be able to see it. This is a crazy setup. And I still don't know what these other um, sensors are. This one looks like it's got the exact same type connector. It's got a single um, terminal on it though. So, but it looks like the exact same sensor. But I, I have to get a service manual for this truck still so I can kind of understand what I'm looking at. All right, I'm gonna start this up. I don't know if the camera's gonna make it, but we'll see. I don't want to get it too hot yet. I still got to get underneath there and work on the drive shaft. As you can hear, maybe on the video, I've got some massive exhaust leaks, and I know exactly where they're coming from. Uh, so it'll be an easy fix. I just don't, it's not a priority right now until I get this thing running and driving. Jack stands real quick. All right, since since we had to abandon this guy in a Walmart parking lot, I was kind of in a hurry to get this thing out, up and out of the way so we could tow it. Looking at it now, I think we might have dodged a bullet. Because <clears throat> it looks like this axle. Man, look at that. Look how close I was to that falling out in transit. It would have just been another disaster. thing that's holding this up now is just that ratchet strap that I used to tie it up out of the way when I when I put this thing up on the tow dolly. I don't think I'd eh, screwed up the tail shaft but look at the play. I don't think that that amount of play should be there. Let me get you closer. 
Look at that play. That explains why there's so much fluid underneath here. I mean, part of it's because I was running with the, the drive shaft to have hanging out, but I don't think I'm supposed to have that much play. All right, well, this is out, so I'm going to just get undo the strap and then get this on the workbench. Quick look at the frame here. Just a lot of surface rust, no rot. And the reason uh, we got so much noise coming out of the exhaust is because in front of the cat, there's a big hole, and the connection behind the cat is really bad too. And I think in front of the muffler, we also have a big bad weld. So this all will have to just be redone, improved. So not that big of a deal. This burns off. Bro, oh, we're getting there. It's just slow. And it's all rusty and the yeah. battery's dying and a million things here. But uh it'll come out. That already disconnected. Oh, okay, not right there. The thing got stuck on the edge or something. I think so. Joint confetti. All right. There we go. All right. All right. So we'll clean this up and then we'll come back when it's time to put the new one in.
Now, uh, <clears throat> now we get to install it in the truck. Here's the hold it on. You gotta remember what these are. 10 millimeter or something. Okay, well the battery died on the camera um, while I was finishing up that U-joint, so all I did was I uh, finished installing the U-joint and I took my son for a little spin in this just so he can get a feel for how rough it's going to ride in its current state. And then I brought it here in the garage and put it up on jack stands and so now that it's in the garage we can get a better look at the underside. So let's do that real quick. Even though it's got a fresh oil change, uh, or it had a fresh oil change when I bought it, I'm probably going to do another one since I ran the oil low. I just want to see what the oil looks like. As you can see, on the underside here, we're pretty wet all over. Not so much uh, out the tail, sh the tail shaft or whatever you want to call it here. It's a little wet here, but farther up, maybe coming out of the speedo gear, um, that could be a leak, not sure. And then obviously where I dumped all the oil. So what I need to do is, uh, I, I'm going to do the oil change, but I'm also going to do a little bit of cleaning so I can run this for a little bit and then come back and see exactly where the leaks are coming from. If you look here, you can see the hole. That's the hole in the floorboard and the driver's side. There's a similar hole in the passenger side. This catalytic converter is done for. Um, it's completely rotted out on the upper half. And then the connection is blown out right here. This joint right there is, that's where all the noise is coming from, the engine noise. This is just, exhaust has been replaced at some point. I mean, it was an okay job. Maybe not the best. Um, looks like they may have reused a section of the exhaust system here, and it's kind of a hot mess here. So I may pull that out and tidy it up uh, just to make sure it's not leaking. I guess on this end of the exhaust, it doesn't matter if it leaks. Just on the inlet side, which looks to be okay nothing obvious so i think the plan is going to be to pull this old catalytic converter out um it does not it, i mean it is it was put in place for like smog and emissions back in the day it's not doing anything now with all the holes in it i'm just going to straight pipe it there is an oxygen sensor upstream but that's just to help with the air fuel mix. Um, but there is no downstream oxygen sensor like in a modern car. So it, it, the ECM in this truck does not measure, you know, the, uh, what do they call it, the catalytic system efficiency or anything like that. So I can remove this catalytic converter without throwing a check engine light or anything. Um, and like I said, at this point, it's not even doing anything, so it's not like I'm making the truck any worse. So I gotta run to the store. I'm gonna run to O'Reilly's and see what they have for just like patch pieces of exhaust pipe. And if they have something that I can clamp in, great. And if it's gonna be something a little bit more involved, like welding, then I may uh, postpone it for a little bit. But I'll go ahead and I'm, I need a new air filter. 
Um, I'll probably grab a new oil filter, and I've already got some oil, and um, we'll get it, the oil change going on this. I'm going to run the engine for a couple minutes just to warm up the oil for this oil change. I figured I can show you what the uh, how the exhaust leaks, uh, where they're at, and how they sound. Dealing with a weak fuel pump too because it kind of struggles in the beginning. I can just hear the exhaust blowing out of multiple spots. I can just hear the exhaust blowing out of multiple places on that catalytic timer. Definitely uh, gonna be a good idea to replace it. All right, so what I got for now um, I got a section of exhaust pipe with a coupler. I'll be able to weld most of it. I do, it did dawn on me that I'll probably need at least one clamp, which I did not pick up. I pulled off an old rusty clamp uh, from the system that was, I don't know what it was being used for. It was dangling there. I may reuse that if it's the right size. Got an air filter because once once I uh, take off that cover, you'll see how old and nasty the old air filter is. A couple of uh, wiper blades that were on clearance. I don't even know the condition of the current wiper blades. I just grabbed them because they were on clearance. And then I got a classic AC Delco oil filter. I may not use this. Really just depending on what the oil looks like coming out. Because like I said, this truck just got an oil change right before I bought it. So this was the uh, oil change sticker. It says 126, well that's the next service, is at 126,222. I'm at 123,283. So maybe about 40 miles ago it got an oil change. And the only reason I'm changing that oil, like I said, is because I ran it low on the freeway at very high revs. So I just want to see what the oil looks like when I drop it. And it ends up it's 9 16 so. Luckily I didn't round it over, but still on there super tight. Like they must have used a impact wrench to put it on or something. Mm. Well, good, that oil looks super clean. Whew, that makes me happy. I just, uh, you know, I dumped everything out, so all it's got in it is some 5W30, a couple of quarts from Walmart, and then some leftover 15W40, like Rotella T6 or whatever. Uh, so this, uh, oil that I'm going to put in here is going to be just conventional oil, uh, but it is 5W30, which is what is, uh, called for, for this engine.
I'm gonna pop the top while I let that drain down. All right, so what's going into this? We got, that's great. Got some, some Harvest King conventional 5W30. This only takes about four quarts. Let's see here. Can't ever tell with fresh oil where it is on the stick. I don't see anything yet. All right, right above the full mark. It's gonna be good enough. All right, we got one last thing to change here. I mean, this thing is old. It's been wet, it's rusty, and this thing is long overdue. It's all warped. Who knows how well it been doing. Here's the replacement. MicroGuard happens to be the same company that makes Wix. Don't know if it is the exact same quality as Wix, but O'Reilly carries both. I would have bought the wicks, but they didn't have it in stock because it's only a couple bucks more. All right, that's done. Oil change complete. Put the cap back on. I hate these style caps, man. I like the screw on caps better. Okay. So I'm just going to run the engine for a couple of minutes, or maybe less than that, and then check the oil one last time. And then I can move on to other things. Well, I guess it's time to tackle this... this uh, catalytic converter here. I'm going to cut it right by the weld right there. <clears throat> and then I'll probably uh, disconnect it from this flange. But I'm going to probably cut the flange off and then remove the whole exhaust system and and then do some welding. Well, it's way after the fact now, but I spent way too much time, way more time than I'd like to admit, on getting this catalytic converter out of the truck. This big bracket here, um, it actually extended farther off to this direction, and it, the bracket that holds up the catalytic converter 
actually is sandwiched between the transmission and the transmission mount. And so I had to unbolt the transmission mount, jack up the transmission, and then take off the screws. This bracket screwed directly into the transmission. And then I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to eliminate that part of the transmission mount system, so I just cut that part off of the bracket and put it back and bolted everything back together. But I have no intentions on putting, if I put a cat back on this, it's not going to be this beast. This thing. Well, I ran out of battery last night and I ran out of time, so anyway, to finish what I was saying, that catalytic converter weighs about 25 pounds and you know, it was a lot of fun holding that up and trying to maneuver the bracket in a position where I could get to the bolts. It wasn't fun. This evening what I've been doing is I just mocked up uh, my exhaust. I cut, clean cut the ends um, coming off the Y pipe over there and then going into the muffler and then I got this uh, whatever you want to call this, they called the a tailpipe extension um, and I put a coupler on the end and don't look too close at my welds, they're not that great. Um, using flux core on this exhaust pipe, man it is just hard to dial in but they're not quite booger welds but they're pretty close but they're good enough so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, beat this into place on the uh, existing exhaust system and then try to get some clamps on it and hopefully uh, everything will fit together All right, if you take a close look, I did not film myself installing this. It's pretty straightforward. I just snuck it onto the, the space that the uh, catalytic converter took up, put it on there with two clamps, you know, plus the welded joint. It makes a nice solid connection. Um, uh, the reason I, um, I didn't full weld it, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't want to learn on that uh, particular piece of it's a mixture of regular steel and stainless steel. Second of all, it looks like that exhaust system's on its last legs and it's going to be replaced soon anyway. So once that muffler rusts out, I'll probably do something, a whole new system or a whole new, I don't know, a whole new exhaust at that point. It's a lot quieter now than it used to be. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on this truck and you'll be able to uh, maybe hear for yourself. I don't know. It's still loud because it's an old truck, but not as loud as it uh, used to be for sure. actually comes out of the exhaust pipe and I'm, I'm just finding out now that it shoots into the side of the bed instead of out the side of the truck so I'm gonna have to do something about that. No exhaust leaks in the section that I replaced. There may be exhaust leaks elsewhere but is a lot quieter than it used to be. All right, for those of you that were wondering, yes, I did get the tailpipe back in the right position, but it wasn't easy because I had already cinched down those clamps, and that kind of deforms the exhaust pipe to a certain degree. I think you only make that mistake once, though. So that's going to wrap this video up. I know it's been all over the place and I have been, I don't know, I haven't been very diligent in recording everything. One of my biggest problems right now is I've misplaced my good GoPro and so I'm using this GoPro and it has horrible battery life and it's just very frustrating to work with because it locks up and freezes and 
and I have no idea what I did with the other one. So it, it's been a while since I've posted videos and I just seem to have misplaced it. But there's a lot of pos a lot of positives that have come out of this video. First of all, I didn't blow up the engine, which is a huge positive. Everything runs really well. It's quiet now. It has a new U-joint, which was just from my carelessness. It didn't really need it, but it can't hurt to do it. The truck is very, very straight, and it's mostly clean. I'm going to have to address those rocker panels in the cab corners and the very bottom edge of the doors, bottom edge of the tailgate, the normal spots that rust. I'm not sure how I want to do it because I want to maintain either that patina or even if I polish the paint, I, want to, I don't want a bunch of primer. And I don't know how good any type of color matching paint is going to be, so that's uh, something for farther down the road. I can cross that bridge when I come to it. I'm not too concerned about it right now. What's next for this truck? Um, I got to clean it up. I got to get it titled and, and everything, but um, I got to clean it up a little bit. I got to sort out the wiring, sort out what previous owners have done to this poor thing. I'm going to try to track down a parts truck because I do want to get power brakes and maybe air conditioning in that thing eventually. And maybe if I can find one with a better dash, I'll swap out the whole dash. I'm going to I'm going to need to address that transmission eventually. It's fine when the transmission is cold, but as soon as the transmission fluid warms up, it starts. It doesn't slip. It does a thing where you, you have to rev it really high and then let off the gas for it to shift. And that's usually a sign that your seals on your valve bodies inside the transmission are brittle or, or hard. And, and so when the transmission fluid's cold, it's thick, and it's easy to push those valve bodies in to change gears. But then when it warms up, it thins out and it starts to sneak past the seal. And then you have to really rev it up to get the pressure up in order to get it to shift gears. Longer term goals down the road, um, if I do end up rebuilding that transmission, I want to put a transmission cooler in front of the radiator to help preserve the transmission after it's been rebuilt. I think I'm going to bring the truck back up to stock height and then bring it back down using better equipment than what's on it right now. Those lowering springs has brought the front suspension down to the point where I've only got about an eighth of an inch of travel before I'm on the bump stops and, and that's just a rough ride. If I use drop spindles instead, I can still maintain most of my front suspension travel and get the amount of drop that I'm looking for anyway. i got to figure out what I want to do with the wheels. I have those 18-inch rims that I don't know if I'm going to use or not. I need to mock them up and see if they'll look good on it. And if not, I'll sell them or trade them for something like a 15-inch or 16-inch. And I'm simple. I like steel rims. I don't need anything fancy on my truck. So like I said, the next video is probably me, probably me cleaning it up. Um, and I also need to... Get new seals. All the rubber seals on that truck are just completely rotted out or missing altogether. And so I'd like to get new window sweeps, new door seals. Uh, the, the windshield and the rear window seals are fine, but I need to figure out the, the seal on the, um, the sunroof and see if I can't get a new one of those as well. And that's kind of how I'm going to tackle this project in just little bite-sized chunks. It runs and drives now and it's going to be fairly reliable for driving around town. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that. That was my main concern. And so now, um, every time I do a small upgrade, I'll record it and I'll drop a video. But this won't be like an ongoing project where I do something new every week. Um, it's going to be like my other projects where I just update when I get around to it. If, uh, if you look, I've been working on some bed frames. And so I've got an oak bed frame here. And that one in the back there is also oak, but it's just been treated uh, with a a vinegar and steel wool solution so it makes a really cool effect uh, unfortunately that will not be a video on the channel I'm just making these for my kids um, but if there's interest I have a request for a third bed I need to make a third one and uh, I'll be happy to uh, show uh, how I do it I, I actually like this headboard quite a bit with the cherry uh, mixed in with the oak so anyway that's enough rambling for today uh, all comments good or bad, criticisms, compliments, anything, down in the comment section below. I read every comment that comes through on my channel. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Let's go for a quick drive.
but you can hear that uh, there's a racetrack at the bottom of my street. I don't know, this little truck has a lot of potential. The seat is vinyl, it rubs against the back window, so that's the squeaking you hear. Since these seats came out of a blazer, they weren't really designed to be in such a tight quarters. Quite a rough ride. Any pothole you definitely feel. And I'm pretty sure there's still several uh, exhaust leaks underneath the hood. The exhaust manifold. All right, there you go. Runs pretty good, considering everything it's been through.